Today's presentation is entitled Yoga, Relaxation or Occult. For clarification, before I continue my presentation, in my studies I use four Hebrew letters, Yote Wafe, and pronounce it as Yahweh or Yahuwah instead of Lord, which is a title and not a name. I also use Yahshua, I pronounce it as Yahshua or Yahusha, instead of Jesus, which is not a translation, but a transliteration from a Greek mistransliteration. The name Jesus has no meaning in Hebrew nor in English. Yahweh and Yahshua, or Yahuwah, and Yahusha are the actual original Hebrew names that speak of our Savior's true nature and character. Now back to our presentation, Yoga, Relaxation or Occult. Yoga is very cleverly marketed to promote health and well-being, but there is much more to yoga than well-being. Yoga means to yoke, to yoke with Brahman, the infinite, the universal spirit, the impersonal force that the Hindus call God, which is Satan. Via the realization of an altered state of consciousness, thereby theoretically releasing oneself from the bondage of endless reincarnation. Yoga comes out of the Hindu Vedas. It can be traced back to Patanjali, who was a religious leader, Shiva, one of Hinduism's three most powerful gods, was known as a destroyer he is called Yogi Swara, or the Lord of Yoga, which is none other but Satan. Freemasonry joins all pagan groups in saying that man can become divine or perfect. Shiva is another name for Satan in the occult. The triangle with one point pointing up is a symbol for Satan. Most likely this is the reason why the pyramid is such an important symbol to the Mason. This is a symbol on the reverse of the one dollar bill. This symbol contains two triangles, the pyramid itself and the all-seeing eye of Horus or Osiris. Occultists know that both Horus and Osiris are alternate names for Satan. There is one more proof from Masonic authors that Satan is the one they worship. It is estimated that there are 10,000 yoga teachers in the United States who teach between 4 and 5 million students a week. Yoga is a program that involves conscious stretching, deliberate movements, controlled breathing, and relaxation exercises. Its purpose is to develop strength, flexibility, and balance, body alignment, body awareness, muscular balance, calmness and controlled breathing. Yoga originated from a school of thought in the Hindu religion which suggests that postures can isolate the soul from the body and the mind. In the Western world yoga is used mainly as a form of exercise. Yoga comes from the original Sanskrit word yoga, which means to join. 
Yoga means to join body, mind and breath, to get them to work together in harmony. This is a lie. It's very gentle, slow and meditative, but it requires concentration. Yoga instructors say they have received a handful of complaints from people who believe yoga is intertwined with mysticism and the occult. We acknowledge that yoga does indeed come from a portion of India's Hindu religion, but our classes deal mainly with the physical aspects of yoga and do not in any way coerce people to become involved in Eastern religion. Here we have another lie. The source is the Bloomington Herald Times from 1991. The emphasis is added. Sadly, even professed Christians have bought into this lie. Every yoga teacher is, in effect, a Hindu or Buddhist missionary, even though he or she may wear a cross, insist that Jesus was a great yogi, and protest that yoga is not a religion but science. This is the most blatant lies. Yet it has been so widely proclaimed and believed that in America's public schools, beginning in kindergarten and in almost every other area of society today, yoga and other forms of Hindu Buddhist occultism are taught and accepted as science. In contrast, Christianity has been thrown out of the schools and is being crowded out of every other area of life in the broad-minded move to replace religion with the New Age science. The source, Dave Hunt, Peace, Prosperity and the Coming Holocaust, page 147. The practice of yoga is pagan at best and occultic at worst. Its teachings emanate from the Eastern religions all of which teach that self is God. Only we just don't realize it. The goal of yoga is self-realization, to look deeply within what ought to be the temple of the one true Elohim, and there to discover the alleged true self or higher self, and declare self to be Elohim. Nothing could be more religious than that. Yet with straight faces, all of the yogis insist that practicing yoga will not change anyone's religious beliefs. This is the religion of Antichrist. And for the first time in history, it is being widely practiced throughout the Western world as transcendental meditation and other forms of yoga. Source, Dave Hunt, The Deduction of Christianity, page 54. There is a common misconception in the West that Hatha Yoga, one of about 10 forms of yoga that supposedly leads to self-realization, is merely a neutral form of exercise, a soothing and effective alternative for those who are poor jogging and calisthenics. However, Hatha Yoga is one of the six recognized systems of Orthodox Hinduism and is at its roots religious and mystical. It is also one of the most difficult and potentially dangerous spiritually forms of yoga. The term Hatha is derived from the verb Hath, which means to oppress. What the practice of Hatha Yoga is designed to do is suppress the flow of psychic energies through these channels, symbolic or psychic, passages on either side of the spinal column, thereby forcing the serpent power or the Kundalini force to rise through the central psychic channel in the spine, the Sushumna, and up through the chakras that the post-psychic centers of human personality and power. Western is mistakenly believe 
that one can practice Hatha Yoga apart from the philosophical and religious beliefs that undergird it. This is an absolutely false belief. You cannot separate the exercises from the philosophy. The movements themselves become a form of meditation. The continued practice of the exercises will, whether you intend it or not, eventually influence you toward an Eastern mystical perspective. That is what it is meant to do. There is, by definition, no such thing as neutral yoga. This is from the book Like Lambs to the Slaughter, pages 93 to 95. So if someone is interested in physical exercises that are designed to help one's body, he should not take yoga, which is designed for death, and teaches how to reach the state of conscientiousness, where one gets a better reincarnation. Even the physical positions in yoga come right out of the Hindu scriptures, and are designed to put one into this state of consciousness, where you imagine that you are God. Therefore, Christians who think they think they are getting relaxation and or exercise are really getting Hinduism. They think they are getting science, but they are getting religion. It's mislabeled and it's dangerous. Summarized from Dave Hunt's comments on a 1988 John Ankerberg show program, The New Age in Society. John Weldon and Clifford Wilson wrote in Occult Shock and Psychic Forces that yoga is really pure occultism. Hans Ulrich Rieke in his book The Yoga of Light also warns that misunderstanding the true nature of yoga can mean death or insanity. Also a little known fact is that virtually every major guru in India has issued warnings similar to these. Like deep breathing techniques such as the ones taught in yoga are a time-honored method for entering altered states of consciousness and for developing a so-called psychic Power. Yoga is one of the basic means of reaching this altered state of consciousness, and the altered state is a doorway to the occult. Sir John Eccles, Nobel Prize winner for his research on the brain, said that the brain is a machine that a ghost can operate. In a normal state of consciousness, one's own spirit ticks off the neurons in his brain and operates his body. We are spirits connected with the body, but in an altered state, reached under drugs, yoga, hypnosis, etc., this passive but alert state, the connection between the spirit and the brain, is loosened. That allows another spirit to interpose itself to begin to tick off the neurons in the brain and create an entire universe of illusion. You have then opened yourself up. It's called sorcery. People are literally teaching themselves how to be demonized, all in the name of developing one's full potential. The science of AUM. I do not know how to pronounce it correctly, so I do apologize. AUM is the most excellent name of the Lord, or Satan. This sound prevails in many human activities and many movements of nature. In the cry of children and sighs, in the tides of rivers and seas, in the movement of leaves of trees, and there are a thousand more examples. AUM stands for several meanings, about a thousand ones.
AUM proceeds in all most of Hindu mantras. All sects and groups within Hinduism use AUM most frequently than any other sound. This is calling the demon spirit to enter inside you and possess you. Besides, it precedes in many Buddhist mantras too. Yogis and saints who are enlightened can hear the enchanting sound all the time and everywhere. It is present in all particles and atoms. AUM existed long before the universe was created and it will remain even after the collapse of the universe. AUM has magical abilities. It can give you shelter, it can energize you, it can purify you, it can emancipate you. And this is from a website called sathakpariwar.com. When you practice yoga, you are emptying your mind, giving plenty room for many demons to enter and take over your mind and your body so that you will not read your Bible or do the will of Yahweh. So here's the question, what does the Bible say about yoga? You will not find anything in scripture to justify the practice of yoga. Many people try to justify their sins, but remember, Yahweh is not mocked. You are the creation, you can't be one with the Creator. Scripture never says to clear your minds, but it says to meditate on the word of Yahweh. If you meditate on the word, you will clearly see yoga is evil, and there is no way to justify it. Many professing believers are being deceived by Satan. Do not worship Yahweh how the pagans do. As we have seen in the previous slides, yoga has demonic roots and it can't, I repeat, it can't be separated from Hinduism. You can't put a Christian name tag on it and call it Christian. You can exercise and stretch, but as a follower of Yeshua, you cannot follow pagan religions. If you want to get closer to Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you must continually talk to him and meditate on his word. Have fellowship with Yeshua, HaMashiach. Yoga separates you from the life giver and opens up your body to evil influences and spiritual attacks. More and more professing believers are departing from the faith and doing things that Yahweh hates. Put on the full arm of Elohim and walk by the Spirit so you can discern His will. Don't deceive yourself, don't be like the world, and don't let a false teacher tell you it is okay. Because these days there will be many who will tell you what you want to hear. There are no excuses on the Day of Judgment. Yoga is evil, plain and simple. Do not love the things of the world. Here is 2 Timothy 4, the verses 3 and 4. That's the King James Version. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. My friend, Satan is very crafty. Don't be deceived like most of the world. This is what happened according to Genesis 3, 1-4. to 
and this is from the easy to read version. Now the snake was the most clever of all the wild animals Yahweh had made. One day the snake said to the woman, Did Elohim really say that you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered the snake, We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden. But Elohim told us, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not even touch it, or you will die. But the snake said to the woman, You will not die. Here are the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11.3. That's again from the easy to read version. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Messiah. The word of Yahweh is clear have nothing to do with demonic practices. Let's go to Romans 12, 1 to 2. This is from God's Word. Brothers and sisters, don't become like the people of this world. Instead, change the way you think. Then you will always be able to determine what Elohim really wants, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Here's Romans 12, 1 and 2 in Bible in basic English. Brothers, let not your behavior be like that of this world, but be changed and made new in mind, so that by experience you may have knowledge of the good and pleasing and complete purpose of Elohim. First Peter 5, 8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. This is from the contemporary English version. Be on your guard and stay awake. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion, sneaking around to find someone to attack. And we don't want that to take place. If you are going to meditate, let it be on the word of the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. This is the advice given in Joshua chapter 1, 8 to 9. This book of the Torah shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For Yahweh, thy Elohim, is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Let's listen to Psalms, chapter 1, the verses 1 to 3. And this is from the scripture translation. Blessed is a man who shall not walk in the counsel of the wrong, and shall not stand in the path of sinners, and shall not sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahweh, and he meditates in his Torah day and night. For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Remember, the Torah is a tree of life, according to Scripture. Then Ephesians 4:14. 4, so that we should no longer be children tossed and borne about 
by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of men, in the cleverness and the craftiness of leading astray. Stick to it thus, says Yahweh. Here is the bottom line. Yoga is satanic worship. Stay away from it. May Yahweh guide you and bless you and lead you into the truth found in His Word and in His Word only is my prayer. If you want to get in contact with me, I invite you to write to Malachi 4.4 at Outlook.com or go to the website thefigtreegeneration.net or thefigtreegeneration.com. The information for this presentation I glean from various sources. I encourage you to do your own research.